unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for what you're going to do and speak to us tonight. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Ezekiel 22, verse 23. Two verses 30. Are we there? I'll read for you. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, This is Ezekiel. Okay, he says, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in the day of indignation. And the Bible says, There is a conspiracy of her, prophets in her busy stare of like roaring lion, uh, ravening the prey that they have devoured souls, and they have taken treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. And he says, And her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. And they've put no difference between the holy and profane, neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my sabbaths and am profaned among them. And the Bible says, And her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey, to shed blood and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untampered mortar, seeing vanity, uh, divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord has not spoken. And the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yeah, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. And I sought, he says, for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. And the Bible says, But I found none. Somebody say, Amen. Now, I needed to share something very, very, very important. I'm going to begin, uh, it's going to begin from a perspective of something you think you understand and then later it's going to get a bit complicated. But not beyond the complication as of the ability God has given you through the Spirit to understand. Somebody say, Ben, you have the grace to understand. It is given to us. Um, I, understanding, the Bible says, dwelleth with wisdom. Do you agree? Understanding dwelleth with wisdom. Understanding and wisdom live together. They don't dwell from each other. They live so near each other. They dwell with wisdom. And the Bible says wisdom resteth where understanding is. In other words, wisdom is restless where there is no understanding. Understanding keeps wisdom. Praise God. Understanding keeps wisdom. Wisdom. And understanding dwell together. These two live together. But one keeps the other. Praise God. Now, wisdom rested in the heart of him that has understanding. Thank you. But understanding wisdom dwelling together, one keepeth the other. Praise God. Understanding keeps wisdom. It rests wisdom. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That's why it says wisdom resteth in the heart of him that has understanding. That means if a man has no understanding, wisdom cannot rest. And if wisdom is not rested in the heart of a man which carries no understanding, you carry a life of ups and downs, experiences of wisdom and lack of wisdom. Things When a man doesn't carry understanding, he carries a, a roaring experience. There are tempests in your character both physical and spiritual. You understand what I'm saying? There are people who are funny. They will show and demonstrate a level of wisdom in something. And then tomorrow morning, they do something that is way foolish. And it shocks. Have you been around such people? Of course, they didn't come today. But have you been around such people? Where, they <laughs> where somebody shows something so wise, they do something wise, they say something wise, they act wisely. And then tomorrow, they do something Oh, and you like, ah, I expected you to know and do something wiser than this. And, it, and if you wait, you realize it's a wisdom issue. 
When you're living that life, you're going to live an inconsistent life, even in your life of salvation. One day you're a victor, one day you're losing. One day you're a success, another day you're a failure. You, are, you carry strength in one area of things and then you carry weakness in other areas of things. You are a success one day and then you're failing, so hitting those dives in other things. You're always up and about like this. You're restless. Because the wisdom in you is not rested. And therefore the, your life will reflect ups and downs of wisdom. That's the essence of understanding. Understanding, the Bible says, wisdom resteth in the heart of him that has understanding. When a man receives an understanding heart, an understanding heart, wisdom will rest. You know, as you live a constant life going upward and upward only, people will start to see progress in your life. You will not shock people in regression. Your life will not shock people in the way certain things happen in your life. Some, you will not shock people. More or less your success will be predictable and expected in every aspect of your life, in everything that you do. You go upward and upward and upward and upward and upward and upward and only. Praise the Lord. Now, I also need to also explain something about understanding. Because now that you know it's what keeps wisdom, let me explain something about understanding. Um... Even people who don't believe in God have a degree of perception, okay? You have other uncles and aunties who don't even know God, but they dream and then things come to pass, or they think things and those things come to pass, or they meditate things and those things come to pass, or they speak things and those things come to pass. But they're not born again, right? And so they have a degree of seeing in the other world, represented and representing in the other realm. But... The only difference between a man who is established in understanding and a man who is not established in understanding, when a man is established in understanding, he has the full mind of God's judgment in everything perceived. In other words, everything you see spiritually, you have the understanding of God's judgment. You judge the things you see spiritually the same way God would judge them. That's called understanding. Understanding is the spirit of judgment, of righteous judgment in the perceived things, the things you see. You judge them the right way. You see them, but you judge them the right way. You see them, but you judge them the right way. Some people think that perception equals to judgment. No. In fact, in the things of the spirit, the premeditated mind must carry a certain judgment before you perceive certain things. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible says, and David perceived that the child was dead. They told him, and he said he perceived. They told him, and he perceived. If David had refused to perceive the death of his child, in spite of what they told him, he would still keep his kid. You understand what I'm saying? He would still keep his kid, like the Shunammite woman. Her understanding refused to kill her child, even though the child was dead physically. I don't know if I'm making sense. Her understanding refused to bury her child, even when the child was dead physically. In other words, judgment, there's a judgment that precedes perception. And the deeper the judgments of God revealed in your spirit, preceding the perception, the things that you see spiritually, that is the beginning of an understanding heart. You judge before you see, that when you see, the judgment of God is aligned to his mind and purpose. Because if you see, but with the wrong judgment, you can err. Hosea is a normal man of natural affections like anybody else, and he wants to marry, he wants to settle down and have a wife. And God tells him, Go in the holes and get yourself a wife. Go in the holes and get yourself a wife. Listen to that statement. Go in the holes and get yourself a wife. Now, how is Hosea supposed to come in a group of prostitutes? They're all lined up on the street, and then he, start, he picks a wife. What criteria would he use? To, prostitutes are all standing in front of you. And then God tells you, go in there and get a wife. What criteria do you use to get the woman? What questions do you ask to make sure that you're getting the right wife? Do you understand what I'm saying? 
Are you seeing where I'm coming from? But it gets coma. And you might even say, ah, maybe the criterion there that is supposed to be used to judge this matter is uh, who is trying to come out, who is not in so much, who went there because of problems, and once you get a man with money, she can come out. You see? You can use all your funny discernments. Eh? And then she has three children with him and goes back <laughs> to prove that she was and she is still. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then he goes in the streets and then buys her back again. Because God sees Goma as a wife, he doesn't see her as a prostitute. It has to take those eyes for Hosea to accept the will of God. That's called an understanding heart. That is why, okay, let me probably put it in the simplest language some of you will understand. When they say, hey, this person is an understanding person, what do they mean? Sometimes in our local English. They mean to say that they, these are people who perceive things, even the hardest things, and they can interpret them in the way they ought to be interpreted versus the way they are usually interpreted by people. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why he said, hey, but this person is understanding. He was supposed to fire me, but he didn't fire me. He's understanding. Meaning that he went just beyond the usual norms. The T's and I's that are crossed and dotted on the paper. Black and white. This is. And then they went deeper to what is really is. Where can I apply my mind to see a place of excusing and pardoning this person based on what their explanation is? And then that person, ah, that person is not understanding, meaning they don't apply their minds to go deeper into perception with the right judgment. Do you understand? Are we together? Now, understanding, wisdom, they dwell together. Wisdom rests where understanding is. Now, for Solomon it was a prayer, right? Give me an understanding heart that may know how to rule my people. For the new creature, it's, um, it's a nature. Jesus became our wisdom, right? He, he became our wisdom. He became our wisdom, our redemption and our sanctification, our righteousness. That is Jesus, who has been made and to us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption and to us. So when you receive Jesus, when the Bible says made unto us, when you receive Jesus, you receive redemption. Your redemption is because you have Christ. Your righteousness is because you have Christ. Your wisdom is because you have Christ. Now, if the guarantee for wisdom to rest is understanding, and Jesus is your wisdom, are you thinking what I'm thinking? If the guarantee for wisdom to rest is understanding, and Jesus is your wisdom, who will never leave you nor forsake you, it means that understanding, the understanding of a new creature is first nature. God expects us to function in the first nature of understanding. First nature of understanding. Knowledge received in us or to us comes with a certain understanding and a certain wisdom. You understand? You all read and have read that with wisdom a house is built, understanding a house is established, and knowledge brings all the riches, the precious riches, the precious oil, everything precious. It fills the house with precious things. Yeah? He says, through wisdom a house is built, by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Are you seeing? Wisdom, a house is built, right? Uh, Understanding, it is established. You see the word again, established, where wisdom rests us, right? And by knowledge, shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Now, the riches of his knowledge come because of understanding. And understanding after wisdom. Right? One time I told people, that's the order of the Spirit. You remember in Ephesians when he's praying for the church? I don't cease to pray for you. That the Lord God of our Lord and Savior Jesus may grant unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation or understanding in the knowledge of Christ. Did you see that? Some versions use the word understanding. And 
because these are the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Again, he brings back the issue of knowledge. You see, in other words, understanding precedes knowledge, and wisdom precedes understanding. Okay, even in that version, you can understand it, right? That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, you will know. Huh? See, Evie, thank you. What does it say? 17. It says, I ask the glorious Father and God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to give you His Spirit. The Spirit will make you wise and let you understand. That is it. It uses the word understand. Understand. CV, thank you. Understand. I'd read it somewhere many years ago. So, wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Wisdom precedes understanding. Understanding precedes knowledge. Yet wisdom can rest only where understanding is because it's established, right? Now, when you understand that process, huh? when the Bible says that my people die because they lack knowledge, huh? when the Bible says my people die because they lack knowledge, they lack knowledge, my people die because they lack knowledge, I want you to understand that it's not enough just for people to lack knowledge. Maybe, just maybe, the lack of knowledge means there is a lack of understanding and the lack of understanding means there is a lack of wisdom because wisdom is the first thing it's the principal thing that's why he says my son with all that I'm getting get wisdom and get understanding understanding comes second then knowledge third you understand you're dealing with Christians who are seeking for knowledge without understanding and wisdom how are you going to grow I don't know if I'm making sense you are looking for a knowledge without the understanding and the wisdom to support what you seek for as knowledge. They are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge. Because knowledge can only come to when understanding is established and wisdom is builded. That's why he speaks of men which are ever learning but never come to our knowledge. Some people are in church and they listen to words every day but they're never coming to their knowledge. Because where they are, we are planting knowledge, there is no understanding and there is no wisdom. So when a man carries not the knowledge, many times there's a problem with his understanding and with his wisdom. There's foundation. There's a problem with the foundation. You cannot tell me what the building is not up. Simple. The building is not up because the foundation is not built neither the body. It's like wisdom is the foundation. Understanding is the body, right? And knowledge is what fills the house with all precious things. Look at yourself as a house built by God. Precious riches. The riches that the church is supposed to have when he's praying for them, that the eyes of your understanding will be flooded with light. You might know what is the hope of your calling and what are the glorious riches of the inheritance in the saints. Those riches are in knowledge. You can't buy riches and put them in a place where there's no house. They will be taken by a thief. They will be robbed. I don't know if that making sense. When you buy riches, they need a building. And that building is understanding and wisdom. So he says, with all I'm getting. He says, get wisdom. And with all I'm getting, get understanding. Do you hear that? Wisdom is a principal thing. Semicolon. Therefore, get wisdom. Full colon. And with all I'm getting, get understanding. When you get wisdom, don't get it alone. Get it with understanding. Because understanding is what will cause it to rest. When you receive this too, when you have wisdom and understanding, every knowledge that comes to your spirit will produce results. Everything you know will produce results. Everything revealed to you will produce results. Everything taught you will produce results. Everything you hear will produce results. But if you don't have understanding and you don't have wisdom, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you carry. Listen, the devil carries neither wisdom nor understanding. Listen, if there is somebody with a demon here, demons have heard the word. Demons have heard the word. Satan has had the word from the beginning of the world. But the reason why it cannot convert him, it's because it does not carry understanding and wisdom. He does not come the wisdom which is of God. He says, carries the wisdom which is of this world. He says, which is brought to nothing. For had they known this wisdom, the Bible says they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If Satan knew what you and I know, he would not have crucified Jesus. He would not have crucified him. He would have bowed before him. But there's a wisdom that he doesn't have. 
And he says, and of this wisdom, we speak in a mystery. This is the wisdom by which we speak. That means we give you wisdom for an understanding to receive knowledge. Every time you're seated in church or listening to the word of God and they're teaching you, seek for its wisdom and its understanding. Every word sent to you, seek for its wisdom and its understanding. Seek for the wisdom in the word and the understanding thereof, then you shall know. That's when you say, I know. That's when you say, I know. Because now your eyes are open. Your eyes are open. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So, according to God, knowledge is the third thing to get. It's not the first thing. Wisdom is the principle. Understanding is second. Knowledge is always the third. Praise God. That's why a man without understanding wisdom, when he sits in the Bible, he can't understand it. He can't understand it. He can't understand it. Did you hear that statement? He can't understand it. Because he didn't get its wisdom. He didn't understand where it's coming from. The people are fighting us. They don't understand it. They don't understand it. If the devil knew who God was, he would not have been funny. Can you fight with a man you know is stronger than you? Do you understand what I'm saying? When he says, I shall exalt my throne above on high. You understand? Like the most high. He had a misinterpretation of who God was. He thought he could be equal with God in his own terms. He misunderstood it. He thought he knew God. Many people who you realize in your life even have issues with you are people who think they understand you yet they don't. You look through your life. Everybody you've had issues with are people who assume to know you yet they don't. And then probably can do or say or act a certain way which they think they know you yet they don't know you. And the more you launch in God, the more unpredictable you'll become. He says, the wind bloweth where it listeth, right? You feel it, but you don't, you don't see where it's coming from. It's going. So he says, one who is born of the Spirit. The more you launch deeper in the Spirit, the more unpredictable you are. The more unpredictable you are. Some people see things with the eyes of the flesh. You understand what I'm saying? It's like in my years of travel, I've realized that white men think Africans don't keep time. That's why I'm working on myself too much lately. Because I don't want to be looked at and somebody sees African first. Let them see Zion first before they see African. Uh, but it's true. Africans don't respect time. They don't respect time. We are meeting at 2, the guy comes at 5. Nenga, when you look through, he wasn't busy. He just overslept. <laughs> Tell me about look, okay? I did what you see with. But it was true. I noticed many Africans don't keep time. We're only early for flights. <laughs> Interviews. So there are people here who there are people who look at you and they think you mm, you I think I can predict you, you know? That's why me I tell people I keep shocking people every day. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I keep shocking people. Every day. Because where they think I am, I'm not there. I'm higher than there. Praise God. And that's how you're going to be. You'll be shocking people every time. Because they think you're here. And then they are shocked you're up there. Then they say, ah, okay, we have seen you up there. Then they come and they think they've understood you. Then they realize you're higher than they thought. I choose to be unpredictable. Tell your neighbor I choose to be unpredictable. Chimogambe, tell them I choose to be unpredictable. I have my reasons why. I, you cannot predict me. You see, when, when a man has walked into the eternal things of life, eh, some of us have gone places. <laughs> and some of you might think it's boasting. It's not boasting, it's the truth. Some of us have gone places. We've gone places. You come back and you're like, eh. Some people are too far. Me, my biggest shock right now. It's like recently I was telling somebody, I told him, I am so shocked at how immature the church of, in Uganda is. The church in Uganda is too immature. It's too immature that it has gone beyond the place of immaturity, at least with the knowledge that it is, to the place of immaturity, without the knowledge that it is. You understand? Eh? Something to know that I can't, and you really can't. But it's another when you can't and you don't even know that you can't. Do you get it? Praise God. 
But I was trying to share something very important here. Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. I don't know whether you have, you have understood where I'm coming from. In everything, seek firstly the wisdom of a thing, then understanding of that thing, then knowledge. Don't seek knowledge of an understanding you don't carry a matter of a wisdom you're not established in. You'll be in trouble. You'll be in trouble. Who is wisdom? Thank you. Wisdom is the person of Christ. That's wisdom. Wisdom is the person of Christ. Wisdom is the person of Christ. You see, when the Bible speaks of how the Queen of the South shall judge this generation, for she moved, she moved many kilometers to come and meet Solomon. And he says, but one with greater wisdom is come. Do you know why God speaks? You see, when the Bible speaks of the queen, say the queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold that greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Solomon is here. That's why I told people, me, I'm wiser than Solomon. I don't try to be it. It's true. I'm wiser than Solomon. If Solomon was on earth, he would learn from me. No, you read. The Bible says that greater than Solomon is here. What does that mean? Who is, who is greater than Solomon? Who is that? Do I have him? Is he made my wisdom? Come on. Is he my wisdom? Is he inside me? Do I live, move, and have my own being in him? The one greater than Solomon. Is he wiser than Solomon? Am I wiser than Solomon? Are you wiser than Solomon? When I'm preaching from the Psalms, I preach from it as a lower truth from where I stand. I don't understand what I'm saying. I'm deeper than the Psalmist. You, you can put your name on solo kulekera o gwe no kaya poso yu alake yu wami yamu kame. Nendiru kebe yu. Saji yamu kama ndika sasiru yesu ya yamba. No. Somebody say I'm wise. And I'm not sorry. Sweet demu gamba I'm wise. And I'm not sorry. Now so how does this wisdom come to you? Through faith. Wow. Through faith. Faith, wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That means when that faith which comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and if we understand that faith brings wisdom, we only receive faith for wisdom, not knowledge. If you receive faith for knowledge and you skip wisdom and understanding, you will be the kind which knows things that can't work for you because you've skipped something in the middle. Should I say it again? Wisdom, which is Christ, came to us by faith that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Who is Christ? Wisdom, right? That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. That he may dwell in your heart. I love the way the Amplified says that he will what? Ephesians 3. Uh -huh. Give me the Amplified. He says, May Christ through your faith. Who is that? Wisdom, right? May wisdom through your faith dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your heart. Through faith. How does wisdom come? So, when the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, what does God want you to hear? Wisdom. Because when you receive wisdom, understanding comes, and when understanding comes, knowledge comes. The problem with many Christians is they've skipped wisdom and understanding, and they think that when faith is given to hear, they hear knowledge, not wisdom and understanding. They're ever learning. Learning. Because they're bouncing from faith to knowledge. But never coming to the knowledge. Because knowledge is a process. It has a process flow. Faith Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. 
That means everything I'm sharing, you're looking for the wisdom of it. Because once you find the wisdom, right? Wisdom is found, right? She's found. The proverb book says she's found. Wisdom is found. When you're in faith, you, you find wisdom. When you find wisdom, understanding is. When understanding is given, knowledge is. Knowledge is not the beginning. Don't think that because I'm preaching to you right now, you're receiving knowledge. No. The guarantee of you receiving knowledge is if an understanding is established in you and wisdom is in you. And you carry the consciousness that legitimizes its function. Because it's one thing to carry some and you don't understand the revelation that legitimizes, that allows it, that gives it free course in your spirit. That's what he's praying for in the Ephesians book. That the Lord will grant unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation or understanding in the knowledge of Christ. When he's praying for them that prayer, when he's praying for them that prayer, when he's praying for them that prayer, he's saying wisdom is yours, understanding is yours because Jesus has become your wisdom. You understand? And that understanding comes through because Jesus has promised to rest. Do you understand? He will he has promised to abide with you forever. When that wisdom, you see, because you carry wisdom, that's why I say it, you carry the understanding. In your testament dispensation, there was an, a restless life of wisdom because understanding was not a permanent line. It was something a man had to keep. But now understanding is automatically kept because wisdom has given us the guarantee that it abides through Christ. Hey, am I making sense? So now because wisdom abides in you and understanding abides in you, because of that, when he says that the eyes, he says that I pray to God that he may give you and to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Christ. The word therefore give is not as one who does not have wisdom. He's not as one who does not have understanding. No. But the word give is like the ability. That you give the ability to comprehend the wisdom. To comprehend the understanding that you will know in the knowledge of Christ. In the knowledge of Christ. In the knowledge of Him. Praise God. When that is given to the church, the eyes of your understanding are flooded. You will know what is the hope of your calling. What are the glorious riches of inheritance of the saints. Power won't be a problem. The exceeding greatness of power which is at work within us or toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power. He says the same body wrought when He raised Christ from the dead. Listen, those are the three things. If you understand the inheritance, the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints, if you understand the hope of his calling, you understand? The hope, what he was looking at when he called you. What are the glorious riches of your inheritance because you're called? And what is the exceeding greatness of power available to you when you're called? What more do you need? Those are the three things. Give me the Amplified of that. The Amplified speaks of uh -huh, having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that, you see, that's what illumination does. Yeah? So that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. Why did he call you? What was his hope to which he called you? What did he hope for? Because hope is a future expectation, right? It's something set ahead. Of an, it's an anticipation. You understand? From a particular meditation. When God looked at you to call you, eh, what was he thinking when he was calling you? Was he thinking that you're going to fail? Was he thinking that you're going to be a mistake? Was he thinking that you're going to be disadvantaged? Was he thinking that you're going to be disgruntled? Was he thinking that you're going to be put to shame? Was he thinking that a certain man can destroy you? Was he thinking that you can be stopped? Was he thinking that you can be frustrated? Was he thinking, thinking that you can be disasperated? Was he thinking that you can be defrauded? Was he thinking that you can fail? He didn't have an idea. He didn't have a revelation or a vision in his spirit. When he was hoping to call you, he knew what he was thinking. He says, what is the hope of your calling? What is, he says, and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints? That means he knew that the moment he calls you like this, he hopes great things for you. What does he do? He puts glorious inheritance. He knew, he called you. He, we, the Bible says we've, we've been called unto an inheritance. We've obtained an inheritance. You and I have an inheritance. When you become born again, you cross to that inheritance. There's an inheritance to your name. There's stuff that are to your name. You don't even need to you don't even need to pray for them. They are there. They're inside because that's who you are. And on top of that, he says, and and so that you will know and understand what is immeasurable 
and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power and so that you will know and understand sorry what is the immeasurable uh, and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us in and for us and that's why i tell people they, they are anointing on you it's only for people no no it's not for people it's also for you ah you see the immeasurable unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us in and for us in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty power and strength and see what that power did for him the same which he exerted in christ when he raised him from the dead and he seated him at the right hand of the heavenly places if that power didn't leave jesus from the grave it can't leave you in anything if that power didn't leave jesus in the grave it can't leave cancer in your body if that power didn't leave jesus from the grave it can't put viruses in you if that power didn't leave jesus in the grave it cannot allow those afflictions to cover it cannot allow you to sink you will not sink settle it in your heart you will not sink that's how i know that i'll be a success these are the things i read and i'm like mm -mm -mm. they're scaring a funny guy this, this guy inside cannot be threatened i know who i am i know what i'm made of i know the fiber of my beings i know the wiring of my system i know the configuration of my story it has a mind to it it was designed by purpose i'm not a mistake I'm not a mistake. I'm not here by mistake. I'm not here by any man's mind. I'm here by the Holy Ghost. Are you alive by the Holy Ghost? Are you alive by the Holy Ghost? You are alive by the Holy Spirit. You are alive. You live in the child you shall have. You shall be a child of the Holy Ghost. He shall be a child of the Holy Ghost. He shall be a child of the Holy Ghost. He shall be a child of the Holy Ghost. He, tell your neighbor, I'm a child of the Holy Ghost. I'm a child of the Holy Spirit. I'm a child of God. There is something inside me. It is burning. It, it is inside there. It is inside. I, I'm not alone. Sitting in the car. You understand? I walk as a child of the Holy Ghost. I'm a I think as a child of the Holy Spirit. I function as a child of the Holy Spirit. There is something inside me. It is... I'm not alone in this. You understand? I, I'm not by mistake. I'm not by accident. There's something inside there. It makes me... Ah! I'm different. I feel it. I know it. You don't need to convince me. I love the way T.D. Jack said some. T.D. Jack said some. And uh, we were sharing it with a fellow man of God. It delivered me from human opinion. T.D. Jack gives a story. He was one time he was on the streets and he's walking with Eddie Long. And then they meet a woman on the street. You understand? And one woman on the street, she screams. She says, Bishop T.D. Jakes and Eddie Long, you guys, do you know what you're doing to the church? You're stripping the church of its glory. You're robbing people. You're manipulating people. You're abusing people. You're, you're, you're squandering the lives of innocent people. You're, you're defrauding of orphans and robbing widows. What is wrong with you? You're so evil. Then they walked away. Ignore her. After about 10 or 15 minutes of work, again they meet another young man. Oh, I can't believe it. Bishop Eddie Long. And Bishop T.D. Jakes, you're here. He knelt down. Oh my God, I don't know what you've done for me. I don't know that you know how much your messages have blessed me. You guys are the only reason why I'm born again. You guys are the only reason why I'm breathing. I didn't know that this would happen. Oh my God, I lay a hand on me. My life will change. And then he prayed for the guy and walked away. And T.D. Jakes says, same street different opinions but none of them moved me and I understood what it means to study the Word of God that you might be approved of men he said study the Word of God that you might be approved a worker unto God in other words, you get the point. Whether they say you are wrong or they say you are right, none of those two opinions move you. The opinion is God. Because I can be wrong by God and still be right by men. And I can be right by men and still be wrong with God. And I can be still be right with God and still be wrong with men. So it doesn't matter whether I'm right with man or, or wrong with man. My most important affair is I have to be right with God. Same street two different opinions but none of them moved me don't be moved because men think you're right don't be moved because men think you're wrong be moved because god thinks you're right 
That's what they call deliverance from people. If they leave, you let them leave. Are you right with God? That's enough. If she chucks you, let her chuck you. Are you right with God? Chimala. If he never sends messages to you, Yamani, are you right with God? Chimala. Man, you know what I mean? I will. Lift up mine eyes to the hill from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from a port so in my No, my help help cometh from the Lord. The one which made heaven under He He will not suffer thy foot. He said to the moon, the Lord that keepeth me, he will not slumber, no man in this world will help you. He will help you because of God. He will help you because of God. He will help you because of God. Some of you want to buy fellow with men. Don't buy fellow with men. God will help you. God will help you. Why did I read the first verse? I want to finish. The land of Israel has been defrauded of its identity and robbed by the ministers then of the time, the prophets, the teachers and all these kinds of things. And they are wasting and they are roaring uh, lions ravening for prey. They've devoured souls and taken the treasure of precious things. They've abused the holy things of God. And God realizes I need to move in that generation. And he says, okay, I don't need to send fire. I don't need to send brimstone. I don't need to send a bazooka. I don't need to send floods. I need a man. wisdom and understanding of this knowledge. Every time God sees a problem eh, on the earth, eh, he starts to think of someone. <laughs> I, I wish you understand. Every time God sees a, a gap, eh, I look for a man to... Eh, every time God looks at a gap, he thinks of someone. That's why I told people one time, and now I hope it sinks deeper tonight, that there is a place for available men. There are people who are just there. They are saying, God, they have elevated their submission to God to the level of telling him, when you're looking for a man, if you see a gap anywhere, I'm available. There's a place for available people. There's a place for available people. I told people, God told Catherine Kuhlman, the stuff you're doing, I didn't call you for it. No, there were people who were not, there were people who I had planned them to do, they refused. They didn't even avail themselves, and Catherine was available. The same he told Reinhard Bonke. He was just an available spirit. That's why I told people, because of the increase of evil in the world, God is starting to look again. He's starting to look again. He's looking. The eyes of the Lord. We run to and fro. 
your life can change with a small mandate like this one mandate some people think eh, that the way god created your life is the way it will go now let me tell you something god has the ability of even changing your destiny to another story because he is god he is god he has the right eh? let me give you an example it was not the will of god for moses to die in the wilderness moses god told moses lead my people to the promised land it was divinely appointed moses had the mind and the grace god didn't tell him the mandate was not to get them from egypt and drop them into the wilderness he told them you shall lead my people from the hand of pharaoh and you shall lead them to the promised land but there is something that killed moses in the middle and another man took over joshua was not supposed to lead the children of israel god eternal out of time knew it would happen but he didn't plan it to happen you understand what i'm saying his plan was through moses that he will take the children of israel otherwise if god tells moses take the children of israel to the promised land and then he knows that the guy is going to die if god knows that this guy is going to die in the wilderness he would not speak with his mouth and say take them to the promised land lead them to the promised land if god's mind was for him to die in the wilderness then he would be a liar to tell me take these people to andegea when he wants me to stop at city hall jabbers here nakawa he would have told me take them to city hall jabbers nakawa that joshua may take over no but something unexpected happened he tells him why did you smack the rock thrice do you understand what i'm saying that means the mind of god for moses was to take this children of israel into the promised land but moses screwed up what does god do because the children of israel say the children of israel have to go to the promised land he looked for another guy he says for in joshua and caleb he says none of these guys shall inherit but these two servants of mine he says they shall inherit the land why because in them is another spirit they something inside moses had the right to cultivate that spirit and not do moses should have known that there was a spirit there was a certain nature that was necessary to enter the promised land i'm not blaming him no i'm using him as an example for you and i the bible says the things that were for written were written for our learning not for our judging but for our learning that through patience and comfort we might obtain what hope right now moses was not originally meant to die in the wilderness that's why his frustration at the mountain he says for i have the power to go in and still have the strength to go out but lord the lord will not let me it is a very painful thing when you still have the power to do something and, and it's snatched out of your hand you still had the power to do business but you've been snatched out you still had the power to have children but you were denied of it you still had the power to continue establishing things when the power is still there if moses was taken at the point when he was too weak to cross that was understandable but it is a painful thing when you still have the power to do things and you can't you, your eyes can still read but you don't have tuition you understand if you don't have tuition at the time when your eyes can't read and you're old and gray that's understandable because education is not necessary for you at then but you still moses still had the power somebody give me that scripture thanks it's a hard thing when the book dries early i tell people it's a very hard thing when the book dries early when you still can and you're disqualified when you still have the power to preach your ministry comes to an end when you still have the power to work and then you get a disease she was strong but then she got this disease and it killed her when she still had the power you see when you are 100 you don't care of dying a heart attack you understand when you are 100 uh uh-huh. attack heart if you want you understand 100 years uh uh-huh. you go to heaven do you understand what i'm saying because you're old you can go to heaven you don't even waste time on being on the bed you understand what i'm saying although it's still not your portion you should sleep in peace your sleep should be sweet eh? and you die you should die sweetly <laughs> praise god uh-huh. let's see you turn on the 34 7 
And Moses was 120 years old when he died, and his eye, thank you, was not deep, no, his natural face. I think that's what I was looking for. And the children of Israel were to yes, okay, let's use that. He says he was not, yes, let's go back. He says Moses was 100 and what? 20 years old when he died, and his eyes were not dim, no, his, his natural face are better. What is the meaning of that? He was still strong. There's a version that says he was still strong. I don't know which version, you don't need to look for it. But there's a version that speaks of how he had not grown old. He was still fresh. You understand? When he died, Moses was still fresh. His natural face. Thank you. Moses was 120 years old. Yes, when he died. Yet his eyes, thank you, that's it, were not weak. No, his strength gone. He still had strength. And his eyes could see like yours and mine. And God tells the guy, you're not crossing. When he still has strength. When he still has strength. When he still has strength, that's the NIV. When he still has strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you available? Yes, because I've asked. But think about it now. Are you available for God? Because I can tell you, there are gaps. There are gaps that need to be filled. But instead of finding God to get those gaps and he exalts you, you're seeking for positions. Do you understand? You see, that's why I told people that. If you, for example, come in a ministry or go in a ministry, don't seek positions. Just seek to be available to serve God. Don't say, I want to be a pastor. No. You just tell God I'm available. Praise God. Just tell him I'm available. Just make yourself available. You know, when I was a little boy, I asked myself a question. Then when I was young, then I called eh? Now me have called me, even me have called me. Hmm? But I can look at some men of God and I explain why they are going to be. I could look at some men of God and explain. This one has a connection with a certain man of God who knows some connection in the United States. This one will connect this guy to the United States. So this one because he has some connections, he'll go to the United States. Because he has connections. He's a friend to a big pastor. Me, I was not a friend to any big pastor. I've never asked for a man to take me to any country. Never. Do you understand what I'm saying? Praise God. Now I look at my life and I'm like, eh, eh. actually now I'm the one who cancels meetings. And I say, you know what, I'm not going to be able Please, Apostle, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able. Please, now I can look through how God connected everything. And I'm like, <laughs> tell somebody when the hand of God is on you. <laughs> That's why I tell people, find God. Just find God. Don't seek. Don't you take a mock politics. Don't do politics. Don't manipulate and speak evil about people for you to be. No, 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 no hide too far but so that when they, you come out it's only God who brought you out we want to get it we quake while I knew by the time we were here you but so we can see you see you 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 tie in a bit of a year you somebody say amen and he will raise you I said he will raise you praise God there are gaps there are gaps can you raise your hands and speak to God Come on, speak in other tongues. There are gaps in all aspects of the ministry and the gospel of Jesus. Listen, there are gaps on all fronts where God is looking for a Christian man, a Christian woman to fill. May God open your eyes not only to see the gaps, but to avail yourself. May he make you more available. Isaiah was seeking God and he stumbled into the heavenlies and God said, Whom shall we send? He stumbled in a conversation where God identified the gap and he was looking for a particular man and he said, Whom shall we send? And then as Isaiah said, Send me, Lord. And the voice sent him. He, God sent him. Somebody tell God I'm available. Tell God unless you make me, no man will. Unless you raise me, no man will. Unless you pick, no man will. You see, there's a point where 
God only. God can only take God. And have you ever been there where it can only take God? Uh, if it is not Him, if it is not Him, if it is not Him, men will not listen to you. You can manipulate your heart to men yourself. You can play church. You can play gimmicks. You can play uh, drama. You can act uh, up whatever you want. But there is a place where God himself can do it in you without your ability, your working, or your potential, your expectation, or your view. Only God. Only God. Only God. Only God. Only God. There is a place for men who are available for God. There are gaps in the spirit that need to be filled. The children of the world have filled these gaps for so long. It's about our time for us to start filling these gaps, giving them answers. Answering hard questions and dispelling doubts. As wisdom, understanding and knowledge is out for our spirit. I pray for somebody to be gotten from one place to another place. May God lift you higher. May God draw you closer. May God establish you. May his face shine upon you. May he cause you to shine. May he cause you to be visible. There are many stars. But the Bible says but even the stars defy in glory. May God cause your star to shine so bright. May God pick you among millions. May he walk through you among millions. May he look through trillions of people and still say you are the one. You are the one that can do this. You are available. My grace is sufficient. My grace is available for you. Rataraba Koste Telebalala Kosta Babai. Your heart is on the sorrow. And your hand is comforting from the above anything that is known by man, anything with life and without life. May God lift you. 
about the day sleep of the day that is may God establish you may God make you shine I pray that a star rise and shine so bright and that favor will cause you to stand before kings and not before me men it will cause Gentiles to come to your light that light let it so shine that men will glorify your father in heaven Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Come and clap for him like something has just lit your spirit. Clap for him like something lit your soul. Celebrate God like something lit your soul. Come on, clap in faith. The wisdom comes and understanding and knowledge like something lit your soul. Something has lit your soul. Tell God I'm an available man. I'm an available woman. Something lights you up. Oh. He says you're like a city on a hill. You cannot be hidden anymore. You cannot be hidden anymore. God removes those things that have been hiding you from the world. He removes those things that have been hiding you from people. He removes the canopies that have been hiding you from blessing and increase and multiplication and success. You'll be considered. You'll be the guarantee. You'll be the only thing they need. In the name of Jesus, God removes that veil of you. The world will see you. The Bible says you cannot light a candle and put it under a bushel. He says nothing that is hidden shall not be brought to light. You are the light of the world. May you be unveiled in the name of Jesus. May the bushel Stand for you to be seen and known by nation. Your name goes abroad and it sounds well. In Jesus' mighty name. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wow. 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 Somebody say, I'm going to be known. More than I've been known. I'm going to be heard. Like I should be heard. My sound goes out. Like never before. It's going to crack hard places. It's going to make crooked spaces be straight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the vacuum is there. I occupy. I fill the gap. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My name is sounding abroad now. There are people sitting on the table right now. And they are speaking good things about me. There are people right now signing things. And they are signing them in my name. Contracts in my name. In the name of Jesus. Sex in my name. In the name of Jesus. Lands in my name. Houses in my name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, altars in my name, pulpits in my name, men are dreaming about me. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, you are increasing my necessity of their hearts. They are going to lose peace about me. I'm going to cross their minds every day and every night and every week in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be the only thing that troubles them. In the sleep, they'll think about me. In their sleep, they'll seek to bless me. In the night, in the name of Jesus, you will instruct their reign to bless me. In the name of Jesus, you turn the hearts of the wicked away from me. You turn the hearts of unreasonable men far from me. In the name of Jesus, wicked and unreasonable will have no thought about me and all their plans in the name of Jesus shall be squandered and destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ when they think of anything good they will think about me when they think of anything great they will think about me when they think of anything wise they will think about me when they think of anything powerful they will think about me they will think about me they will think about me beautiful they will think about me in the name of Jesus, they'll speak about me. When look, they look for answers, they'll speak about me as an answer in the name of Jesus. They'll not have questions when they meet me. I will answer her sentences. I'll dispel doubt in the name of Jesus. My name goes ahead of me. It goes ahead of me. It is sounding in their ears. It is sounding in their wife's ears. It is sounding in their ears in 
the name of Jesus, like of the wife of Pilate. She may trouble this man, Lord, so he troubled me the whole night. Jesus troubled a woman's soul until Pilate could not judge him. Let God trouble some people's souls to judge in your favor. Let God trouble men's souls to judge in your life. In the name of Jesus, may they lose sleep. May they lose appetite. May they lose everything. Seeking out to bless you because of the God inside you. And may you always give God the glory. May you always give God the honor. May you always give him the praise. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. May you use this to the glorification of his name. The expansion of his kingdom. And may he be known through you. In the name of Jesus. That children will hear you. That your name will pass that children's ears. They will mention your name. Even babes that didn't know you. Little children will mention your name. And they will know that God spoke. Let your names write on their walls. Let your names write on their windscreen. Let your names appear on their phone screen. Without your indulgence. Not by power. Not by might. But by the Holy Ghost. And I'm talking of kings. I'm talking of influential men. I'm talking of the diligence of this world. The cream de la cream. The wisest of all. The strongest of all. The mightiest of all. The influential of all. Let them favor you with no reason. In Jesus' mighty name. Give the Lord a mighty hand up of praise. Come on. Come on. You need that, and the rest will come. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody here and you've never given your life to Christ and you want to be born again today? Come. If you're here and you say today I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and you're not born again and you want to be born again today, where are you? You'll not regret. You'll not regret. The people who are that telling you, Lord Jesus. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.sonero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make money.